Have you ever wondered what does senior software engineers do? What makes them seniors? And what makes juniors juniors? Well, look no further, because in this video I'm going to tell you the differences among junior, mid and senior software developers. Hello there good people, welcome, my name is Marco and I'm a full stack developer, working from home. Now, in the tech industry, you will often hear terms like junior developers and senior developers. And you might be wondering, you know, if you try to apply for a position, you might be wondering, am I a good fit? Would I be a good fit for this role? Maybe they're asking for a mid-level uh, developer. Am I there yet? What could I expect from a role like this? Let's start from a junior role. Now, juniors is probably the lowest level in terms of experience and responsibility. That is a key point. As a junior developer, you can expect to write code primarily, usually towards smaller stuff, uh, small tasks and adjustments, small improvements here and there, basically uh, refactoring, which is a good way to get started because like this, you can basically take a look at the entire, maybe not the entire, but the code base they have going in the company. Now, if you're lucky enough and work for a bigger company, you'll get to do also quite a lot of uh, pair programming, especially at the beginning. And that is fantastic because you can have sessions with the senior engineers and man, you can learn a lot. You'll be given a task, a small problem to solve, and you'll get on with it together with a colleague. Now, honestly, I strongly encourage you to make the best out of this opportunity because you really can learn a lot. So don't be afraid to ask questions. Don't be afraid of doing something you're not really sure of your code being clean and, and beautiful and good looking. This is totally expected from junior developers and this is why you usually have a more experienced figure beside you. And also, you'll get to do a bit of training on the technology the company uses for other stuff like version control, I don't know, GitHub or GitLab, and messaging or project tracking. And there is where you learn the internal mechanism of the company, so not much for coding, but that's okay, it's, it's interesting anyway. You learn how the product is made from start to finish, hopefully, how the work is organized, how the roles are assigned, many different things. When you get to a mid-level position, well, now you are expected something more, actually quite a lot. Your tasks will be harder, longer and more complex, which means that they will depend on more things, more things related to each other. You'll start doing some debugging, some serious debugging, and that can be a very good teacher you learn a lot about debugging tools and dev tools. And also you can now be tasked with actually building new things, like uh, new features. You're not going to design them, but definitely you'll work on them. And if the company is rather small, it's highly likely that you'll see the whole process and you'll get to basically work on everything. So front-end and back-end and database. So you can see that you are supposed to know the language fluently know how to solve problems and basically how to be independent. You're able to read and interpret and follow instructions on documentations like online. You're able to look for answers online like Google and Stack Overflow and GitHub. Of course, responsibilities follow. You are now responsible for the piece of code you write and most importantly, you are responsible for it to be clean, well commented and most importantly for it to work correctly. Now there's gonna be probably a testing team, if there isn't, well, you're kind of in charge of your own testing. Of course, nobody expects you to do it in one shot. There can be many trials and errors and help is always given to those who ask. Unless your colleagues are assholes, in that case, just get out of there immediately. But basically, as a mid-level developer, you have the tools and knowledge to survive in the wild, alone. Quick reminder, if you're liking this video so far and would like to help this channel, well then leave a like and share. Last, we have the seniors. And it's good to mention that seniors in this case means just the years of experience, because senior positions are something else. You have the seniors, but you can also have the product manager, the project manager, or even the tech lead. Depends on the hierarchy your company has. Now, I will shock you saying that seniors do little to no coding at all. Again, it depends on the size and resources a company has. But generally speaking, seniors are more orchestrator and administrator of the, the project usually. You get to manage things, you get to design things, coming up with solution to old or new problems, help uh, your colleagues like uh, junior and mid-level uh, developers. But fundamentally, you'll keep in check the status of the product, of the project. 
what has been done, what is missing, can, can it be improved, how to speed things up, where to focus the attention, you know, prioritize. And you'll be surprised to know that in terms of actual technical skills, which is like the knowledge of the language, seniors might be actually worse than many juniors. But that's obvious because you don't get to work on the coding part. And a good rule of thumb in these cases is if the code is well documented and commented, it probably was written by a junior. If it doesn't have any comments at all, it probably was done by a senior. However, you have tons of responsibility. You basically could be in charge of delivering the product and get everyone to work harmoniously and efficiently together. But most importantly, you gotta make sure that the code is coherent. Now, we all know that uh, we all have different styles when it comes to writing code. Well, as a senior, you'll do a lot of code reviews and that's to just give a certain style, a standard to the code everybody is writing because you'll run the risk to just generate chaos. If everybody just use their own method, you need to give it a standard. So in this case, fundamental skills for senior developers are strong organizational skills and most importantly, communication. Of course, not all of them get to lead a team, even though some teams can be as small as three to four people, but they are usually the figure at the top, the one that communicate with the product manager or even the executive. But sometimes you'll see senior developers just being like, you know, the rest of us. At their desk, just coding. All right, and now that you know the differences between these roles, and if you were planning to start a career in tech, well then subscribe to this channel where I usually talk about these topics. And also, if you want to start coding, check this video to decide your first programming language. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.